chi-squared test. And we're going to use this test to figure out whether our hypothesis about the genetic basis in beans when, we're, when they're crossed is true or not. Now, bean plants may have different symptoms when infected with the virus. Now, this, these symptoms are what the phenotype that we're looking for is. Now, some show local lesions that do not seriously harm the plant. Others show a systemic infection. Now, the following genetic analysis was made. We had a parent generation where all local lesions were crossed with plants that show only systemic infections. And we get an F1 generation, the first generation, that show all local lesions. Now, this what this tells us right here, if we have a cross between two, and we only see one phenotype in the first generation, that must mean that the local lesions uh, phenotype is probably the dominant phenotype. So what we're going to do is assign big L for local lesions, right? This is the allele for local lesions. And we're going to assign little l for systemic infections. Now, again, to get the F2 generation, we cross the F1 with themselves. And we get a ratio of 785 local lesions to 269. Now, what is this possible uh, genetic basis. Well, if we're going to assume that all the F1 generation was all local lesions, what was probably happening was that we had two true breeding um, parents crossed together. So what possibly happened was that we had a big L, big L, right? Crossed with a little L, little L. And this gives us our uh, big L, little L F1 generation, which would all be all local lesions. These would be local lesions. This would be systemic. And right. And so for a heterozygote for this, genotype, right? The dominant phenotype is going to occur, and we're going to have all local lesions in F1. Now, if this is what our F1 is, when we cross the F1 with themselves, right, we're going to get a mix of F2, right? We're going to have big L, big L, big L, little L, right? Heterozygote, and then little L, little L. And only little L, little L over here, right? Only this is going to be systemic infection. And so, we have a one to three ratio of systemic infections to local lesions. And that's what our ratios look like. 785 to 269 is very similar to a three to one ratio. So we're going to assume this. We're going to assume a three to one ratio of dominant to recessive phenotypes. Now, we want to evaluate our hypothesis using a chi-square test. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the number of local lesions we had and the number of systemic infections that we had, right? And then we're going to see the total, and we're going to calculate some things. So for the local lesions, we saw that we had 785. And then for systemic, we saw that we had 269. Now the total for that would give us 1,054 samples. Now if we divide 1,054 divided by 4, right, that would allow us to cut it into quarters. And each quarter would be equal to around 264, right? So if we have a 1 to 3 ratio of recessive to dominant phenotypes, right, we assume one part for systemic infections and three parts for the local lesions. And so our each part is going to be around 264. So this is our observed right here. And our expected value, if we're going to assume a perfect 1 to 3 ratio, for local lesion, for systemic I mean, 264, and three parts for local lesions, which is 264 times 3, and that gives you 790, around 790, but this is a little bit of rounding, right? And so, what's the difference between 785 and 790? It's 5, right? Or negative 5. And so we can have observed minus expected, that gives us a negative 5 difference. And for systemic minus, uh, systemic infections, our observed minus expected is also a 5 difference. So this is our difference, D, right? And then, we have our difference squared. So if we square our difference, we get 25 over here. And if we square our difference over here, we also get 25. And then we want to finally calculate something. We want to calculate the difference squared divided by the number of expected samples, right? So we expected 790 for our local lesions. So 25 divided by 790 gives us 0 0.031. And then the same thing goes for systemic infections. We get 25 divided by 264. That gives us 0 0.093. And so the total amount, right? This is going to be our chi-squared value. Our chi-squared value is going to be these two numbers right here added up together. And that gives us 0 0.124. Now there's one more thing that we have to figure out, which is our degrees of freedom. So DF is degrees of freedom. Now, how many phenotypes do we have? We have local and systemic, right? And we calculate degrees of freedom with n minus 1, where n is the number of phenotypes that we have, 
and then minus number one. So we have two phenotypes, minus one. So we only have one degree of freedom in this case scenario. So there's going to be a table provided to you that has a list of chi-squared values for each degree of freedom. And then in the columns are gonna be the probabilities, right? And so if we use the chi-squared value of 0 0.124, the degree of freedom of one, that value is anywhere between the probability of 90% and 70%, right? So this is our probability values that we get anywhere in between 70 and 90. Well, what does this mean? This means that on average, if we were to repeat this experiment again, we can say that safely 80% of the time, so 70 to 90% of the time, you will get these same results, right? We have the same amount of deviation. And what's the deviation I'm talking about? Right here. D, which is the difference between observed and expected for both the local and systemic, this, this is called the deviation, right? The total deviation, we expect it to be around the same for 70% to 90% of the time, right? So what is this telling us? This is telling us that yes, over here, we can assume that we do have a one to three ratio. We cannot reject the, the null hypothesis, which is basically assuming that we have this one to three ratio of recessive to dominant um, for our genetic basis. So yes, we are going to assume the genetic basis for our bean plants is having a dominant and recessive allele, right? Mixed in together. We have two true beating, get a all heterozygote F1 generation and get an F2 generation of uh, one fourth homozygous dominant, one fourth homozygous recessive, and then two fourths or one half heterozygote, right? Now, how do we design a test cross to test our assumptions, right? We want to assume that we have at least one fourth homozygous dominant and one fourth homozygous recessive. How do we test this, right? Well, if we have for our F2 generation, right? So this is our F2. If they are little l, little l then we know for a fact that this is going to be systemic infection, right? We already know what the genotype is if you have a systemic infection because there's only one genotype for systemic infection. However, if we have big L, but we don't know what the second allele is, we're going to have our local lesions, right? So how do we determine if the genotype of a certain plant is big L, big L, or big L, little L, right? Well, we have one of three options, right? We have big L, big L, big L, li big L, little L, and then big L, little L. So it's one of three options, right? If we cross some unknown plant with unknown second allele, right, with a homozygous recessive plant, so one that has systemic infections, right, we would assume that from the offspring, if this was big L, little L, right, that half our offspring would ha be systemic infection right here. So this is half the offspring would be systemic infection. However, if we had an, uh, an F F2 generation genotype that was homozygous dominant, then none of our offspring would be systemic infection because they'd all have the big allele, right? The big L allele. So they'd all be local lesions in this case scenario. And we would assume that one third of the time, right, we would get no offspring that has systemic infection and two-thirds of the time, we would get a systemic infection. I'm saying one-thirds and two-thirds because if we look back in our Punnett square for our F1 generation creating the F2, that only one-third of the three options that we have over here is homozygous dominant, which would give us all local lesions if this was crossed with a homozygous recessive um, genotype. And two-thirds of the times, which is two out of the three options that we have, would provide us half as systemic infections if crossed with the homozygous recessive bean plant. And so that is how we use the chi-squared test to test our hypothesis for the ratios in a genetic basis. And then we can design a test cross, which is using a homozygous recessive plant to test our assumptions.